Hey everyone! In previous videos, we discussed session-based authentication, token-based authentication, and CSRF protection, and all within the context of a Laravel application. And while comparing between session-based authentication and token-based authentication, I mentioned that to be able to use session-based authentication, your front-end, your JavaScript front-end, must be hosted on the same root domain as your back-end. Otherwise, you will have to use token-based authentication. But the problem with token-based authentication where where to store your token in the browser. There's actually no place secure enough to store the token in the browser without exposing it to other parties who can use it to make requests on the user's behalf. In this video, I'm going to show you a pattern called backend for frontend. And we can use this pattern to hide the token from the browser. So we will never expose the token and we won't need to store it in the browser. And there's actually an added benefit when using this pattern. So let's let's dive in and see how it works. So in a regular setup, you would have your JavaScript application on the front end hosted at domain.com and you have your back end at domain.com and you use session the session cookie to authenticate between the front end and the back end. And for mobile application and third party application, you would use the token based authentication. However, if your front end is hosted on a different domain, say frontend.com, and you need to communicate with your backend at domain.com, you need to use token based authentication. Since the front end and the back end are on completely two different domains, you will not be able to use session based authentication. The idea of the backend for front end pattern is that you will have a dedicated backend for your front end and you can make requests from the front end to the BFF and the BFF is going to make requests to your actual backend on your behalf. If you host your front end backend at the same domain as your front end, so here frontend.com and the PFF at frontend.com, you can use sessions to authenticate requests between your front end and your PFF. Your PFF will issue and store the token for you and it's going to use this token to communicate with the backend, with the actual backend. So let's have a look at an example screen that we have in our application where you display the, all the products in your uh, application and you also display featured products. So in order to render this screen, you will need to make two requests, one to fetch products from the products endpoint and another to fetch featured products from the featured products endpoint. You will make two requests to your PFF and the PFF will make two requests to your backend and then you will get the response in the end. But since we have the PFF as a proxy anyway, we can actually have an endpoint on the PFF that's slash products. And when the front end makes a request to this endpoint, the BFF is going to make all the other requests to the actual back end and send the response back to the front end. That way we will only need to make a single request to the BFF instead of two requests. So let's see this in action. Here I have the front end hosted on front end.web and we want to reach the screen that we render all the products and featured products. And if we had that screen, we are asked to log in first. So let's log in by going to the root and providing the username and password. And when we log in, we get redirected to the products screen where we have the featured products and all products listed. So let's take a look at the requests that happened here. We can see here that we made a single request to the pff.frontend.web, which is where our backend for frontend is hosted. And we are making this, this request to the products endpoint. In the response, we can see that we get the JSON of the featured products as well as the JSON of all the products. And if we look at the request headers, we haven't sent any authorization headers, so we didn't use any tokens. And if we take a look at the cookies, we can see that we are using the regular Laravel session cookie to authenticate between the front end and the PFF. To get an idea of how we can do this using a Laravel application as the PFF, let's take a look at the routes that we have here. First, we have the CSRF route, and that's a route that we call from our front end only one time to generate the CSRF cookie. 
And after that, when the user tries to log in, first we collect the username and the password coming from the front end from the request, and we send it to the back end, the actual back end. So the BFF here is making the request to the actual back end to authenticate the user. If the request fails, we'll just send the response coming from the back end back to the front end. And if the request was successful, we'll just collect the token and store it in the session so it's stored in the session of the pff and send an okay response so now the front end has the session cookie and when it communicates with the pff the pff will be able to extract the token from the session data stored for this session and we are going to use this token to make communication with the real back end in the future. So if we take a look at the products endpoint and the PFF, we can see that before we make an actual request to our back end, we get the token from the session and use it as an authorization header. So here we have the first request to the products endpoint and here's the second request to the featured products endpoint. If any of the requests fail, we will just return the response coming from the actual back end back to the front end with the response body and status. If everything works, we'll return the products and the featured products from the two requests that we just made. Now let's take a look at the example front end that we have. So here we have a typical form where we collect the username and password and we send the request when the user submits the form we send the request to our pff and you can see we're using with credentials so the cookies are sent and received as well and if the request is successful we'll just redirect to the products.html page if we take a look at the products.html page here we list the featured products and all products and also we have here a place to display any errors coming from the pff and when the page loads we'll make a request to the pff and with credentials of course so we send the session cookie with the request and when we receive the response we'll just render it in our html page in case we receive a 401 error from the pff we'll just display a message to the user asking him to log in first and as you can see we are not sending any tokens with the request the token is stored in the PFF and we are using session based authentication to communicate between our front end and the PFF. So what do you think? The extra requests that you make to the PFF can be a little bit worrying, but actually it can be useful if you need to make several requests to your back end to render a specific screen. You make one request to the PFF and the PFF will make the rest of the requests for you. Requests from the PFF to your server can actually encounter less latency because it's a server to server communication. And in addition to all this, using this pattern will allow you to stop exposing your tokens to the browser. The token will never reach the browser. There are benefits and drawbacks. I hope you learned something from this video anyway, and let me know what you think. Do you think this pattern is useful enough that you will use it in your applications or not? Please leave your thoughts in the comments section down below and I'll do my best to answer all the questions. Thank you and have a great day.